10 first meetings, there was always a standing session, what shall we do about universe hierarchies, how shall they be implemented, and there was never any conclusion. So today it's the conclusion. <laughs> well, we'll see. Uh, <clears throat> so let me start by saying how our discussions started. Um, we, um, yeah, first maybe I should say that universe polymorphism was really invented by Gerard Huet in 1987 in the early days of calculus of constructions. And then there is a paper by Bob Harper and Randy Pollack a little later, which develops the theory a, a bit more. Uh, so our starting point to a large extent was the lecture notes written by Martin Escardo, uh, Introduction to Univalent Foundations of Mathematics with Agda. Uh, so this is quite an extensive development of implemented univalent mathematics, and it is very universe polymorphic. Uh, so that was a starting point, right? Another thing which kind of testifies to the idea that universe polymorphism has increased in importance with the advent of univalent foundations is that Wawodski himself took interest in this, in this problem and has devised a particular system for universe polymorphism in quite a long paper, unpublished, I think, universe polymorphic type systems, where you have constraints on universe levels. So <clears throat> other papers which are, are highly relevant for this are uh, by in the Koch community, I guess, for, from here in France, a paper by Courant from 2002, and by Herbelin in uh, 2014. There is also, also another paper by Mathieu Sousseau and Nicolas Tabarot, which explains universe polymorphism in, in, uh, in Cork, and which is you know, very relevant for what I, quite close to what we are, what we are suggesting, actually. So another starting point when we started these discussions in Oslo in the spring of 2019, was that Mark Besem, he had an algorithm together with some other people uh, for solving constraints in some language with a supremum operation and a, and a next, next universe operation. And the idea was to use this algorithm for solving constraints uh, over, between universe levels. But basically what we, what we are looking for is a simple yet powerful foundation for universe polymorphism, something which kind of feels theoretically well-rounded. Uh, what we are saying is not sort of particularly novel, I, I will have to say. We are really kind of just uh, taking in the state of the art from Koch, Agda, and Wawodski's ideas and trying to kind of make a suggestion which you, uh, you know, can give me feedback on <laughs> at, the, at the end of the talk. So let me just, uh, to get you into the right mood, uh, show you a piece of code from, from uh, Martin Escaldo's library. This is how he formalizes the univalence uh, axiom. You know, the, on the first line, we have the definition of the proof that equality implies <coughs> equivalence for an arbitrary pair of elements x, y in a universe u. So you see that it's universe polymorphic because u is an arbitrary universe. So actually what u colon universe means in Agda is that you know, u is a universe level, so it's in, in the type of levels. But I will come back to the, uh, what the Agda system looks like. And then there is the proof of this, just using the fact that the equivalence is, uh, is a reflexive relation. And then you can uh, formulate the, the uh, univalence axiom for this uh, universe U, which says that this map in EQ, EQ is an equivalence itself. Okay, so here is uh, how Aida uh, you know, the, the approach to universes which has been implemented in Agda. So first, there is an omega power of universes a la Russell, set equals set zero, set one, set two, etc. 
you know, in Matthew's notation, these are u dot u dot plus, and, or u plus dot and u plus plus dot, etc. Uh, so the choice eventually uh, became to introduce a special type level of universe levels. And then you can, uh, you can define universe polymorphic things by quantifying over level. So level could, it could be the type of natural numbers, but one hasn't wanted to go all that way. So instead it's a kind of algebra with operations uh, zero, level <coughs> zero, level successor, and level supremum, uh, which satisfies some, some equations. Uh, and then in order to, to uh, type certain functions, including uh, those level hierarchies, something which is not a type, which is called a kind uh, set omega, a kind of least upper bound of all the, of, of all the hierarchy, but it's not a type. And then uh, I believe the chairman of this session has extended this to another infinite hierarchy above omega. <laughs> so basically you have some kind of system uh, of two omega universes where only the, the <coughs> first omega universes are, are somehow real, real uh, first class types. Uh, <coughs> for example, as you know, I've just copied it from the Agda manual here, that, or Agda wiki, this hierarchy, the one above omega, does not support universe polymorphism. Uh, so there are no sorts set omega L for, for L level. So what is interesting here is that the designers and implementers of Agda has chosen to go a bit beyond uh, just having some kind of external, uh, external hierarchy but hasn't wanted to go the whole way of making a, a levels a first class type with elimination rule and so on, effectively the natural numbers. One could do that, right? One could actually base universe polymorphism on a stronger type theory with something like a super universe or a minimal super universe and so on. But for various reasons, one has chosen not to go that, that way. Okay, so in our approach instead, uh, levels do not form a type, but we introduce a judgment that something is a level, and we have an equality judgment that, uh, that uh, two levels are equal. And of course, these, ca these are, can be done under hypothesis. Uh, so we, we can introduce level variables as well, and uh, Yeah, uh, so we have a room of assumptions for levels. We can form the successor level, and we can form the supremum of two levels. And the algebra here is that of, of a sub lattice with an inflationary endomorphism in those two equations at the bottom. So interestingly, I think, we decided not to have a node zero. Will this work? So uh, let's start with some type theory where, where we have some ba basic, uh, basic uh, usual type formers like pi types. So now we can form these level indexed, this level index hierarchy of types. So for each level L, we have a universe a la Tarski consisting of the type UL. And for each type in UL, the decoding of that as a type <coughs> PL of A. And then we have operations, indexed operations for coding. <coughs> pi L M L B <coughs> is what builds a code for the pi type above, you know, given that the first, you know, the first uh, argument type A is in U L and B is a family in, in uh, U M. Uh, then the whole pi type needs to be in U L sub M. And we have a rule that we have a code for the Lth universe in UL plus one. And then we have the usual decoding equations for, for the pi type here, uh, the for the pi type and for the previous universe. And of course, there is also a Russell style version. So I should say that I'm only presenting the basic 
type systems that we are proposing, but in another thing we are working on is to have smooth proof of, of uh, equivalence of Russell and Tusky, and also characterizing our systems following the initiality conjecture as, uh, as uh, initial models in categories of, uh, of, of models of the, of the type systems. This is a way of kind of seeing that the system in question is, uh, is regular. So uh, <coughs> there are opinions whether, different opinions whether one should have cumulativity. So we, we don't hardwire that into the system but make it an op optional construction. So for example, we can have a cumulativity operation which raises a type in <coughs> UN to, to a type in UN provided M is greater than or equal to L. And of course L less than or equal to M means that M is equal to L sub M. And the equation saying that the decoding of a type at level M, uh, which is raised from level L, is the same as the, the decoding directly the decoding of the, of the, of the type in, in UL. And similarly, raising uh, the level of the type twice is the same as, as doing it in one go. And of course, all of this simplifies a lot in Russell's trial, where the, where the two uh, later equations disappear, and the other one is just that if A is in UL, then it is also in, in UN. Okay, what about not having a universe? So Martin has a very polymorphic development. His U's and V's and W's are all over the place. But he uses actually the U0 in a few cases. So Agda provides that and said U0. OK, so then you know, uh, we put the question to him. If we are really serious about not having U0, can you modify your library, please? So he said, yes, I think so. And he thought it would take two hours, but he said it took five, uh, five days times four hours. <laughs> and so it's possible, but non-trivial. It seems kind of, well, you know, it seems kind of easy. What you do is that, so for example, he has the natural numbers in U0. And now instead, you have to have a polymorphic natural numbers, which goes into an arbitrary universe, U, with you know, implicit dependence on the U. OK, so that's basically the first system, only <coughs> like, like, like that. That should be a fairly regular system, rather close, I would have to say, to what is already <coughs> being called, but not exactly the same, but rather close. But in order to, to uh, get a little bit of the power that you have in Agda, it would be nice to be able to quantify over levels. Now that <coughs> levels are no longer types, we can't just use, use phi types. So we have to introduce a special, uh, a special construction bracket alpha A, where alpha is a level and A is a type depending on, on alpha. So now we turn for all alpha A into a type. And this makes it possible to, um, to uh, uh, have a special type saying, for example, that if we know that all, all universes U alpha for arbitrary universe levels are univalent, then we can prove that all functions between elements in two arbitrary universes, u beta and u gamma, uh, satisfies the, the principle of functional extensionality. So, uh, and this is the kind of thing that Martin has in his library, and so we would like to have that in, 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 this, in this system, which you can see it as meant as a kind of outline of a theoretical foundation for Martin's library. So we, since it's pi type, we have uh, application and, uh, and abstraction operations, and we have beta conversion and eta conversion. OK, so that's system number two. So let's look at system number three, which is really inspired by Wojewodzki, but ideas which also appear in these papers in the Koch tradition. So here we're motivated by maybe something which may look a little bit contrived, but things like that appear in uh, Martin's library. So say that you want to prove for all types A, B, C in different level universes, L, M, N, 
that a times b equals c times a is equal is uh, implies b times a is equal to c times a and this is a well formed type provided l sub m is equal to n sub l and m sub l is equal to n sub l and the fi funny thing about this is that we have no single most general solution of these constraints but three maximum points written in those three lines and this you know this is an example which comes from thinking of in terms of the you know some of you may be familiar with the stable domain theory and the gestalt function which is you know i mean stable domains were invented in order to try to have a definition of sequentiality which forbade parallel or but it didn't for, for forbid the gestalt function so this is a maybe contrived but nevertheless interesting example of why you may want to work in a system with constraints so we introduce a type theory with level constraints the level constraints is just simply uh, two uh, level expressions uh, an equation between two level expressions L and M and we now have a new judgment form that a finite set of constraints psi is valid so it's valid under in a, in a context gamma and we can also have a constraint assumptions in in our uh, our context so here are some more examples of things that you can write in this type theory with with level constraints just a simple fact that if alpha is less than or equal to beta then the next level is alpha plus is less than or equal to beta plus is now a valid judgment or the fact that if you raise u alpha to the universe u beta by the cumulativity operation t alpha plus beta then this is valid provided alpha plus is less than or equal to beta and it also shows how we can use th this type with uh, with no ge most general <coughs> yeah the, the, the example on the previous <coughs> page as a single type now but in a context with those constraints <coughs> and the final type theory is that we can also consider uh, internalizing those uh, judgments with constraints assumptions as particular types so given that a is a type under the constraint psi then brackets psi a is a type and we have some introduction rule there saying that p if p is in a where psi is valid then p is also a valid term of type brackets psi a and we have an elimination rule where we can instantiate such a term provided we have proved that all constraints in psi hold yeah and finally so uh, you know another sort of a little bit independent aspect of what we have been discussing is this algorithm by Mark Behlen and his uh, co-workers from 2008 so now this has kind of been you know worked out for this particular situation with universes and in particular they have shown that for this algebra of the sub semi lattice with an inflationary endomorphism there is a constructive proof that either there is a loop that is that you can find a level expression l <coughs> that l is equal to its successor or there is a model so that the, they are const uh, uh, consistent. And Mark has been discussing with, uh, with Mathieu yeah, yeah. there. <laughs> and Mathieu has implemented this al the algorithm implicit in this proof and compared it a bit to, uh, to uh, the current way of doing it in, in Cork. And I should let him say how he's doing it. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay, are there any questions? Can we hear about Aaron's implementation of that? <laughs> <laughs> Want to say something? Uh, so
So I've been experimenting with replacing the algorithm using COC, which is restricted to a simpler form of constraint, where you just have a, a level can be lower than a, a lower or equal to a level, or just strictly lower than a level. So it's simpler than using the whole max suck. Uh, but in, uh, in many cases, we can find a comparable performance. There is only one issue is the treatment of equality of universes, which is highly optimized in, a, in the actual COC implementation using a union fine data structure that goes well with the graph of constraints. Uh, and that needs to be integrated with the algorithm of uh, Bezem and Cocon to, to get the same kind of performance everywhere. You said it was non-trivial to convert a library which used set zero to one that didn't. Mm -hmm. But had there never been a set zero, would it have been easy enough to do in the first place? Probably, although there, there, I think there are, I mean, he mentioned some things which were causing difficulty, like the definition of negation, because the bottom was defined in U zero, and now you need to do that universe polymorphically in both, in both arguments, right? So that sort of thing yielded a little bit of extra complexity. I don't know otherwise, you know, but he said that it was more difficult than he thought. But you're probably right that if one is in the frame of mind from the beginning not to use U0, then it's probably quite natural to do it, I, I imagine. Couldn't you just parameterize everything by some universe at the start? Then? That's the feeling when you read Martin's uh, library. At first you get a little bit, why are we putting out all these U's, W's, T's? Every day, you're all over the place kind of things. One starts longing for to, to add implicit. But Martin says he likes it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in Coq, we only have uh, prenex polymorphism for uh, universes. Uh, what about the models of uh, and the expressivity of the resulting theory where you allow arbitrary quantification over levels? Ooh. What kind of results would you have in mind? You're, you're thinking about proof theoretic strength. Yeah, so, um, but I would think, you know, I mean, Anton is the expert on such things that if you can only quantify in this limited way, then it would not increase the proof theoretic strength very much, right? Because you basically have a type theory with certain proof theoretic strength. And then in addition to this, you can have these high types over, over levels. And the levels are quite limited. There is no elimination rule, and so on. Yeah, uh, I think that's the only thing. I, I don't think, so I, I think actually it has, that, that question has arisen sometime in our discussion, because I have been the guy who has said, why don't we do full induction recursion? <laughs> and then Thierry has said, oh, we should keep the proof theoretic strength a little bit. <laughs> so we, we have had a little bit of that sort of, sort of discussion. <laughs> okay, um, very interesting discussion, but uh, I think we have to move on to the next speaker. Uh, one, one quick question, if you want. I, I just wanted to know if you had a story uh, for inductive times. Like in, in Coq, there's this very fancy uh, um, universe polymorphic inductive types and that's where a lot of the complexity lies uh, and I'm, I'm wondering like if you have this, this no, ideas we, for this we don't have a story for this yet but I agree that this is the sort of thing we should have and of course this is the sort of thing which would interest me since I have worked on these formalisms for inductive types and if I want to uh, add a universe level dimension to those kinds of schema one would have to want, want to create models and so on in order to, to show that it's all work, works out. But it, it, I think it would yes, be quite an interesting project. I know that in the papers on Cork they have, they have considered such questions, right? Okay, let's uh, thank Peter again. Do you still have the clicker?